Welcome to the Tantra and Yoga podcast. These podcasts are recorded live at Anuttara Ashram with Artemis and Bhairav in the Nishka Nation of Northern BC, Canada. They bring clarity to some of the fundamental questions by spiritual seekers along the path of awakening. I guess with my personal practice of working with the energy of Saraswati, so like arts and things like this, um, sometimes I'll find that thoughts about like ideas for art projects will come and part of me is thinking like, oh, maybe I should like go down this thought train and as like this is something that's coming up in my meditation that it could be helpful. But then I also find myself thinking, oh, I should not really be engaging in this thought right now and just allow it to go and then come back to the mantra. Mm-hmm. But when it's a thought that's seemingly related to the energy, would you say that that's something that I should pay attention to or is that sort of like a trick? A trick, yeah. I, I can totally relate to this. I get the same thing actually with um, the building of the school. So many brilliant ideas come in the middle of meditation and I want to go into them or sometimes I will write them down so that I can let them go but most of the time I try not to even engage in that way to just be like if, it, if it's really meant to be it'll come back after I'm done the meditation and oftentimes I do find that it's like it's burning and right there ready as soon as meditation is done. Mm-hmm. Do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, it's really important in in meditation that whatever comes, we just we just let it go. Whether it's good thoughts or bad thoughts, we just kind of let it go. And if it's meant to really be a part of our life, then it will come back to us. We won't even need to be uh, thinking intensely like, "What oh, was that great thought I had?" It'll just come, you know. Um, because actually, like. When when we go deep into our sadhana, um, these were kind of uh, start to be uh, propelled by these uh, by these periods of intuition. We start like compelled to to carry forth that action. Um, so it's not really even something we need to plan. Well, I mean, we also might need to plan it, but it's like it like comes in full force. As uh, I heard this, uh, um, one lady uh, speak about how she was astral traveling. Um, I think into she astral traveled into a deer, and how she felt like the deer's consciousness was so driven by the herd. It was our herd of deer? I don't know. Deers around here don't travel in herds, but anyway, she was so compelled by moving with the herd. There was no uh, independent thought process. So this is kind of the same way. Whenever we go deep into our sadhana, uh, we get we get pulled into um, channeling the divine, and it's we we would be able to say no, but we also know that it's kind of like what needs to happen at the moment. So we just kind of let that let that happen, and also and uh, we also have have to have awareness. Um, whenever we're not on that train as well, whenever we're doing something from our independent, like stubborn self-will, and also through laziness. Because you could also just say, oh, no, no, I'm going with the flow, man. Just leave me alone. I'm like, I don't do anything, you know. I just go with the flow. And like the dude in, uh, what's that movie? <laughs> the dude, uh, yeah. I know the bowling movie, anyone? No? <laughs> He's the dude. The dude. Yeah, the dude. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not really following your what, because like the uh, this path is um, like it's a very dynamic. Like life is a very dynamic thing, and when whenever you start to we we start to awaken Shakti, then it's a it's a dynamism that comes into your life and unfolds. Yeah, there was something I wanted to add, actually, as I was listening to Bhairav speak, which is, um, I recently, I can't remember where I read it, but I read somewhere um, a beautiful description of the difference between Shiva and Shakti. And it was just simply that Shiva is consciousness, and Shakti is the power of consciousness. And so it's in a lot of ways, it's not even Saraswati. It's when we're working with Kundalini, when we're working with Shakti, this 
power will start to come in our life to start to bring consciousness into form. For you, it may be through art. For Bhairav, I know when this building was coming in, to shape after every meditation he'd be like i had a brilliant idea of how this is going to happen and i feel the same for myself in in like i said in creating this school so i also wanted to bring it full circle also back to an earlier talk we had about dharma and so when when we are building shakti or when we're going deep in our in our meditation just as bhairav has has said it compels us to live in our dharma, to, to do, there is no questioning what we're supposed to do. It's very clear. And, and so that might be also what you're starting to, to touch in on. But there's no need to have to think about it, really, because it's, it's being cultivated in the meditation. And that's just a distraction from the energy that is what will make it come into fruition, be it art, a building, whatever yeah so it is a trick of the mind pulling you from creating the very power to do, that. To do what you need to do yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. if you found this podcast helpful be sure to follow and turn on notifications to be the first to know when new episodes are released to embody philosophy through practice join our sangha membership to access a wide range of tantra and yoga classes and community Hari Om.